Ben Ainsley, dickhead. Nocturnal is a 2019 social realist drama from first-time director Natalie Biancheri. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The plot details the questionable relationship that, that blossoms between a, a sl slightly slow, dim-witted, odd job man in his 30s and a cynical schoolgirl who, who kind of is, is hiding in this intense training regime because she's just moved into town and she hasn't been welcomed, basically. Yes, we're back in social realist territory and it's a good one. In fact, the essential performance is one of the best I've seen for some time in terms of its uniqueness and character. This uh, main character played by Cosmo Jarvis, he has that he has like he's perfected that sort of slow understated way that northern people talk and act, you know, in 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 the way that they um if they'll just in the way that they just are like, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm not bad. Mustn't grumble when they're actually dying inside. That's what you get from him the whole time. He never rises above a certain pitch. He's always, huh? Dickhead. I really like you. And it, I think to some people, especially people outside the country, might see that as sort of poor acting or underacting. But it's not. It's completely realistic. That is how a lot of people are, not just in the north, but in this country. There's just that such. So it's a sort of tight, tight upper lip sort of thing. To just never, never, never be like, no, I need help. No, I'm really struggling. I'm dying inside. No one really says that. Although they post it on social media a lot now. He doesn't seem the type that would know how to use that. Oh. So you you get you get the impression from him that the way the way he carries himself and and the way he carries himself and he just sort of he looks a bit. It looks a bit like you kind of get the impression that he was hurt, hurt as a as a child, like not not by his parents, but maybe by his first love or something like that. And he's kind of just shied away since then. He's he he's a, he does odd jobs. He sort of drifts around, and he's not really engaged with people that much, and he's not really grown emotionally. That's that's the impression I get from just from how he acts. But the schoolgirl, on the other hand, seems sort of older than her years. She seems almost emotionally older, like she's already cynical and dismissive, that, you know, in the sort of way that you kind of get to middle age and you're like, I've, oh, but I've done everything. I've done everything I should have done, but I don't feel like I've achieved that much. I've just sort of followed the rules. And then you start to get cynical and dismissive and then you sort of realise when you get there as well that you, you thought that you, the people older than you were actually knew what they were doing. And then when you get there, you realise that you, you were told complete bollocks for most of your life and now you're in charge and you don't understand anything either. But she, she seems to have already reached that level of maturity, even though she's still at school. Yeah, so, so they both sort of seem to, they both sort of seem to be in an emotional position where they don't have a lot to look forward to and I think that's, that's what sort of what connects them. That's why it makes sense that their, their friendship blossoms, even though they never say it, they'll never have a discussion like that. But then maybe they sort of see that in each other that they're both just a bit, oh, why bother? So that's something that sort of bonds them. And I'm not going to say anything more about that because you have to watch it to understand the rest of the relationship. Thank you. So yeah, I love that naturalistic acting. I love how believable the characters were and how relatable. But I, I, I loved also the cinematography because it, it looks really stylish. It looks really stylish and it's really memorable, but it, it doesn't it doesn't take away from it being a social realist film. They've just they've written it very cleverly and they've they've placed it in places very carefully so it seems you know, like his his sort of housing estate is a this sort of horrible concrete concrete maze that that makes him look trapped, you know. You know, and they don't—they don't need to stylize that. They've chosen the right location, it, and they've chosen the seaside. Everything looks sort of dreary and dreary and drizzly and prisony, <laughs> concretey, brutalist. It's, you know, it rains all the time. There's there's a lot of scenes that are shot at night, so you get that blue moonlight coming in. It just makes everything that much colder, and it just builds that world really well without it being not the real world, without it going too far. And you know, like it doesn't look like Manhunter. Does. It's not that stylish, but it still it looks brilliant and it, it looks really striking and it's really memorable. So they managed to do that without, like they've written the script with that in mind instead of writing the script and then being like, now what cool stuff can we do with the camera? <laughs> Which is what some people seem to do. <coughs> so it's like um like in never rarely sometimes always did that. It wrote around, it wrote around the sort of style and the the the, the sort of subtext of what's going on and stuff like that was all sort of implanted in it rather than just being slapped on top as sort of a stylish thing. And, it, and it's it's all done so it doesn't sort of betray the realism and sort of break break that world and bring it into a more normal Hollywoody 
world, which is what's a lot of stylish, stylistic flourishes for me sort of do take me, take me out of that. But yeah, I think that's that's one of the things. Like, the more I look into social realism, the more sort of avenues for creativity seem to be there that everyone thinks aren't. Even though, the, like, the, the 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 plot isn't. There's not that much to say about the plot. But it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, that is social reason. But the way that they, the way that they've, um, it's the treatment. It's the treatment of that plot that makes it interesting and and different, without ever sort of breaking out completely. There's still there's a lot of scope within the social realist sort of genre to play around and to do interesting things and to show show people, to give people voices that haven't had voices and to to give us something visually memorable, visually and emotionally memorable. I, don't, I think more people should try and do this because like the sort of restrictions of it do make it more creative like the, like the Dogma 95 movement where they took away all those things and said you can only work with this you you have to become more creative within that and that's what the, the best filmmakers are doing with social realism yeah because these, these places and stories do exist you just have to look at them with the right eyes that's all that's all that's required of social realism is to look at things from a fresh perspective from a different view and just yeah, do something, do something a bit different. Yeah, of course. What the fuck is that? So yeah, nocturnal, great subtle visuals, great realistic acting, great characters. Um, the plot, plot not that interesting, but it's social realism. It's life. It's captured something that happens a lot in a place that captures a lot that's relatable and real. It's a, it's a great social realist film. Well, a great film in general. <laughs> but I, I just like to focus on the social realist. So yeah, great film. Um. 8.5 out of 10 I'd give it. Have you seen it? What did you think? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all, all that all that jazz. And I'll be back next week with another Reviews on Realism.